All right, welcome to the first live stream that I'm doing of a penetration testing exercise where we're gonna walk through Over the Wire Bandit. Now, what is Over the Wire Bandit? This is a capture the flag exercise. And if you're coming across this video, you're probably already working on it. Uh, so welcome to live stream. If you're watching the replay, again, welcome to this stream where you're gonna get to see all the mistakes that I make along the way. So we're gonna go through the entire thing. Now, what is a capture the flag exercise? Basically, this one especially is how you can get an introduction of things like Linux and penetration testing, which is hacking. Uh, this gives you a controlled environment where you can learn different things in a structured manner. And the point of this is that we're going to connect to a machine and try to utilize different tools that we can use through Linux or basically abuse the system in a way that typically it's not supposed to be used in order to get information so then we can progress to the next level. The reason this is important for if you want to get in things like cybersecurity and penetration testing is this is going to be a way for you to learn the different skills. And this one here isn't going to be us really breaking into a machine and running kind of known exploits on machines. This one's going to be more so for us to learn the commands of Linux, learn different processes, learn a, bit, a little bit about networking and ports. And we're going to get to basically try to find uh, the information to go level to level. So let's go to the screen here on the screen capture. So we're gonna be here at level zero and we're gonna go through the whole thing. And what we're gonna do is we connect to this machine here, bandit.labs.overthewire.org port 2220. And I have a terminal here. By the way, this is Kali Linux. Uh, this is a pretty good machine. I have it running in virtual box. If you're wanting to get into this kind of stuff, I advise you to look into something like Kali Linux or Parrot OS uh, that come with a lot of built-in penetration testing tools. You can build it from the ground up, but if you're wanting to learn this kind of stuff, this is a good place to start going in and getting into it by just downloading one of these distros and launching it in virtual box. It's super easy to do. But what we're going to do to connect to that machine is we're going to use SSH and that's going to create a secure shell. And what we're going to do instead of just typing in this name here, we're going to need to define what user we're connecting as. So we're going to connect as bandit zero. So what we're going to do is type bandit zero at bandit.labs.overthewire.org. Ooh. And my machine's having a little bit of trouble with the stream. There we go, overthewire.org. And then we're gonna define our port. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do TACP. That's gonna stand for port. We're gonna put a space in there and the one they want us to connect to is 2220. So we hit enter, and I misspelled bandit. And it tells us here for bandit level zero, that username is bandit zero and the password is bandit zero. So very easy. We'll switch back. Bandit zero, when you type this in here, the password's not gonna show, but it is there. And we are in. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that. And now we see instead of my name on my machine, we're now bandit zero at Bandit. So we're actually connected to this virtual machine. Let's bring this down a little bit so you can see the bottom when we connect. So now we're connected to this virtual machine and we're logged in as Bandit Zero. So we can see that with who am I? Bandit Zero. So I'm not Cole anymore. I'm doing commands in this terminal on this machine as this user. So now to the actual game, 
how do we get from bandit zero to bandit one? That's gonna be the whole point. We wanna to get to one, then we get to bandit two, then bandit three. So let's look at what it wants us to do to get to the next level. The password for the next level is stored in a file called readme located in the home directory, okay? So here we are in bandit, we can use pwd. So we see we're in the home directory of bandit zero. So it's in a file called readme in the home directory. Where is it? We can use ls to show what's in this directory that we're in right here. And we see the readme file is right here. So if you're using Windows, you're using Mac, and you're clicking through a folder, say you clicked on documents, say we were in that folder here, this would list out what you have in the document. So the same concept. So what we want to do is print what's on readme. So we're going to do cat readme. And there we go, that should be the password to the next level, to Bandit 1. So, we're going to copy that. And I have this here for some notes. And so we're going to SSH. And this time we'll do Bandit one at and since we're already connected to the machine we can do localhost so we're just switching the user we're opening a secure shell for a different user on the machine that we're connected to so localhost in this instance is not my actual machine that i'm running on it's the machine that i'm currently connected to so we'll hit enter we'll accept the fingerprint we will paste the password and there we are we're in bandit one All right, so now getting to level one to level two. The password for the next level is stored in a file called TAC located in the home directory, okay? So we do ls, we see that there's the file there. Okay, so we wanna print this one so we get the password. And if we do this, remember when we did SSH attack P port uh, 2220. This right here is going to indicate in this terminal that we're adding a flag to this command. So if I go ahead and hit enter, it's not going to do anything because it doesn't know what I'm talking about right now. It wants me to add what that attack is. So we're going to exit out of that, control C. And to do this, we're going to need to escape it. So we're going to do dot slash like that, and then we put in the tag, and now it should say, okay, we realize this isn't a flag, this is the actual name of the file you're wanting to get to, so we hit enter, and there we go. We can get the file name here. Sorry, the password here. And we'll add that into our notes in case we get disconnected. And actually, let's paste that there. We know bandit zero, so we don't need to keep that. And that one's actually zero, not one. So we'll cut that. Sorry guys, it looks like I can't <laughs> operate a computer today. All right, and we'll cut this one here and get those in line. Because if we get disconnected, we don't want to go through the whole thing again. We want to just grab the password and get to the next one. So that should give us what we need here. Let's SSH to Bandit2. And I know this one's super, super easy so far, but trust me, it's going to get more in depth. So it'll get more entertaining here as we progress through the levels. It all builds on top of itself. And that's what I really like about going through these kinds of exercises when you're learning is it is going to give you the initial skills that you need to then solve the future problems. So we'll clear that out so we can see better. We're in Bandit 2. Let's look at level 2 to level 3. All right, this one is called spaces in the file name, and that's what we need to read. So let's go to the terminal. 
Okay. So if we put spaces in there, it's going to think that we're making additional arguments to what we're trying to do. So we're going to copy this and we're going to cat. So we print it out. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put it in quotes, paste it in there. And that'll let it know that this is what we're looking for. If we didn't put these quotes, it would think that we're trying to cat spaces and then we're making an additional argument for in and an additional argument for this and then an additional argument for file name. It's not gonna know what we're talking about. So that's why we put the quotes there when we have spaces in the file name. And paste that into our notes. And we'll go to bandit3 at localhost, accept the thumbprint, paste that in there. And here we are at bandit3. So we'll clear that out. How do we get to bandit4? Let's take a look. The password for the next level is stored in a hidden file in the in here directory, okay? So let's come back to our terminal. So this one isn't in the home directory. So we go to ls. All right, so we see there's a folder for in here. How we're gonna get there is we're gonna use cd. Oh, the cd command, that's gonna help us navigate through where we're wanting to go. We could specify the entire path, but since we're already in the home directory, we can just put in the folder name. And then we ls and we don't see anything in there. So it said it's a hidden file. So what we're gonna do for that is we're gonna do ls, but then we're gonna add an additional argument. We're gonna do tac a, which should be all. And now we can see everything that's in that directory. So with a period in front of it, it should hide it from view. Wait, what's called a hidden file. And it can be a hidden folder. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we can now see it and we're gonna cat.hidden. All right, and that prints out the password for bandit4. And we'll go ahead and copy that. Put it in our notes, because as you're doing this, especially, you know, it's kind of easy now, but as you're getting into more advanced stuff, which if I do any instruction videos for things like uh, hack the box, or try hack me, we're actually attacking machines. It's gonna be pretty important to keep your notes on what you're finding when you're doing a lot of the investigation work on these different attacks. And it's gonna be important that we spell bandit correctly because it's not gonna know where we're going if I don't. Bandit for at localhost, there we go. We'll accept it. Jeez. And there we go, we're in Bandit 4. Let's get to Bandit 5. All right, the password for the next level is stored in the only human readable file in the in here directory, okay? So just like the last one, there should be an in here directory. We're gonna CD into that folder. And just in case it's a hidden file, let's just do ls to sa. Okay. So tag file 00, tag file 01, all the way up to 09, okay? It says it's the only human readable one. So if it's not human readable, let's just go to make a guess. Let's cat and remember, it starts with a dash there. So we have to escape dot slash file zero zero. Let's try to read that. Okay, so it prints it out. And this is not human readable data. So that's not going to help us at all. So we're going to go and reset here. Clear that out. Let's do ls again. So we see that they all start with tac. And there's five in here, so, or sorry, there's nine, 10 in here. We're gonna use the command file, and this is gonna tell us what kind of file 
a certain file is. So let's do the same thing, dot slash file zero zero. Okay, it shows us that this is data. So we could go through one by one and look at each of these and eventually find what we want. But let's say you're working with hundreds of files. It's not going to be very efficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the file command. We're going to escape. We're going to put the tack. And then we're going to put a star here as a wild card. And that's going to say everything that starts with this and then anything under it in here. Go ahead and show me what kind of file type it is. We hit A or we hit enter and there we go it lists all of them and we can see file 07 is the one that's ASCII text that's going to be the human readable one so we're going to print that one out cat dot slash tack file what was it 0707 and that gives us the password for bandit 5 we're going to copy that We will, as always, put it in our notes. Don't worry, you only have to hear me say that about 30 more times. And then we'll SSH to bandit5 at localhost. We'll accept the fingerprint. If I could type today, we could get through this a lot faster. <laughs> we'll paste the password in there. By the way, if you're on Linux and you're in this terminal, just so you know, if you copy that password, it's going to be Control Shift V instead of just Control V. That's because to exit out of something is going to be Control C. Uh, so you're not going to use that to copy. So same thing with copy. Control Shift, look, Control Shift C is going to copy. Control Shift V is going to paste when you're in the terminal. All right, so now we're gonna go from bandit five to bandit six. And again, as you can see, a lot of this right now is just teaching us how to work within the terminal, teaching us simple Linux commands because when we get to more advanced stuff, we're gonna really need to know this foundation to know what we're doing to try to figure out how to get past those things. All right, so the password for the next level is stored in a file somewhere under the in here directory. It has all the following properties, human readable, 1033 bytes, non-executable okay so it's in the in here directory we know that so we will cd to in here probably should have checked to make sure that's where it was it is there okay so we're gonna ls and i'll do dash la okay so we have a good bit of uh, folders here actually so let's go to clear this. And what were the properties again? Okay. Let's go off the size. 1033 bytes. We're going to use find. And since we're in this directory, it's going to be finding things within here. So right here, we can see the username, where we're at. And here we can see the directory we're in. So since we're here, it's fine. We don't have to specify anything on this. And we're going to do tack size. And since it's 1033, let's do 1033C. That's going to be just the nomenclature of how you do it. Hit enter. OK. So we found that in dot, so a hidden directory, maybe here 07, and then a hidden file under that, dot file 2 is the only one that we found under here that fits the size. So it looks like that should be our file that we're looking for. So let's copy this. So we're going to print that out. Hit copy. And there we go. Okay, <laughs> that's how they made it uh, so large for just some characters is they put a bunch of spaces in there. So let's go ahead and copy this password. Jeez. All right, the joys of doing it live. There we go. This uh, broadcasting software is kind of making this machine freak out. I didn't give it very much resources. 
and it looks like it's not liking it, but it's okay. We're gonna get through it. There we go, bandit six. So SSH, bandit six at localhost. Accept the fingerprint. Paste the password. There we are. We're in bandit six. Let's get to bandit seven. Okay, the password for the next level is stored somewhere on the server. Okay, so this is gonna be a much more broad search for us. So anywhere on the machine. Owned by bandit, owned by user, that's important. Owned by user bandit seven. Owned by group bandit six and 33 bytes in size. Okay, so this one we're probably gonna to have to get a lot more uh, specific with our search. So we're gonna use find. And it's anywhere on the server. So actually, let me show you that. So if we do PWD, Show us where we're at. We're in slash home slash bandit six. So slash is gonna be the initial part of the directory for lack of a better word. There probably is a better word. I just can't think of one right now. And then we go into the home folder. So that's where we're connecting to in the shell, but we wanna search everything within there. We don't wanna just search our home folder because it's not saying it's in our home folder. It's not saying it's somewhere within this user's folder. So we're gonna do find, and then we're gonna do slash and space. So we're searching everything on the machine here. And it said it was owned by user, who is it, user bandit seven. It's also a nice thing about this Linux terminal is I can kind of see behind there. And it was group bandit six. User bandit seven, bandit six, and size 33C. Was it 33? Yeah. So TAC user means we're gonna search for a file that's owned by that user. TAC group means you're searching for one owned by the group that you specify after that. We'll hit enter. And all right, so it found a file here in the var folder. Let's copy that and this should be our password for the next level. Print that out, and there we go. So that should be the password for bandit seven. SSH bandit seven at localhost. And it's at not bandit 72. Accept the fingerprint. Paste the password. And we're in. So we want to get to bandit eight now. All right, the password for the next level is stored in a file called data.txt next to the word millionth. All right, so let's find data.txt. All right, it's right there in the folder. Let's look what that looks like if we print it out. So it's next to the word millionth, maybe we can just look at it. Okay, this is a really big file. I'm gonna go ahead and try to escape out of that. There we go, all right. So instead of doing that and just scrolling through the entire file, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do cat data.txt and then find what we're looking for. You can put a line there and do grep space and then what are we looking for? We're looking for something next to the word million. So we're gonna look for the line that has the word millionth on it. 
and that should print out what we're looking for. There we go. Millionth. And then it said the text that's next to it. So this should be our password for bandit eight. Bandit eight at localhost. We accept the fingerprint. And we're in. So let's go ahead and document that password. Paste it in there. And how do we get to nine? The password for the next level is stored in the file data.txt, so same thing, and is the only line of text that occurs only once, okay? So I'm not gonna print this one out to display it because we did that on the last one. But we're looking for a unique line of text. So all the other ones occur multiple times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna print it, data.txt, and we're gonna sort this data. And what we're gonna do is the command to find something unique within the document is going to be uniq and then tech u i believe yep and that did it for us so this should be the only line of text within that entire document that only occurs one time so we're going to copy that ssh to bandit 9 at localhost Looks like I accidentally hit the caps lock. No, <laughs> that was weird. Bandit nine at localhost. And we're gonna accept the fingerprint and we're gonna paste the password. And there we are, we're in bandit nine now. Let's document that. And let's figure out bandit 10. I think we're getting close to being out of just kind of the simple commands. We'll get to some more fun stuff here in just a second. Just hang with me. All right, the password for the next level is stored in the file data.txt is one of the few human readable strings preceded by several equal sign characters. Okay. So, we only have one file to work with. and it's a data file. So we saw in one of the earlier uh, levels that when we try to print this out, it's gonna give us some weird characters. But it says that there are strings within it. So let's go ahead and print this using cat. Okay. So we see there are some letters in there. Most of it's data. We can't really read this. So let's reset our terminal. So what we're going to do here is we're, we're going to use the command strings. So this is going to read through that file and it's going to give us the human readable strings within it instead of giving us all the different data. And then also we're going to use grep, what we learned just a second ago. And it said it had multiple equal signs, so we'll do two equal signs. So we should print the, uh, the lines that have two equal signs in it, and it should just print the human readable characters to us. And it's gonna go through that. I did not define what file we're looking for. <laughs> All right, so, strings, data.txt. It is important to tell the machine what file to read. There we go. The password is this. So this should be the password to 10. As always, remember to actually define what you want the computer to do. SSH bandit 10, oops, 10 at localhost. And we're in.
All right, so let's get to 11. The password for the next level is stored in the file data.txt, which contains base64 encoded data, okay? So, gonna get to learn how to use one of your first tools here. Let's ls, we see data.txt is right there. And this is base64 encoded, so if we cat data.txt, okay. Don't know what to do with that. That's not going to be our password. So we have to decode this. So, so if we look at base64, that's the type of encoding that it says it used. And tech h, it should show us different commands we can use. Uh, maybe base64-help, okay. Okay, so that doesn't work for base64. We could also use man. You can put man space base64 and it give you the manual for it. So we see here tech d is what we're going to use to decode the data. So let's clear this. We're going to use base64 tech d. So we want to decode this. And we're going to use data.txt and this should print out what we're looking for. There we go. The password is blah, blah, blah. We'll copy that. We'll SSH to bandit 11 at localhost. We will say yes to the fingerprint. We will paste the password and we are in bandit 11. Paste that. How do we get to 12? Always stay hydrated. The password for the next level is stored in the data.txt file where all lowercase az and all uppercase letters have been rotated 13 positions. Okay. So this is what's called rot 13. Rot for rotation. There we go. So we have data.txt, we'll cat data.txt. You see this one isn't a ton of other letters like the other ones. So this is actually the same amount of characters and all these have been rotated 13 positions. So we're gonna translate this. We're gonna cat data.txt and tr. I can't remember if this is transform or translate, but tr is the command that we're gonna be using and I can never remember rot 13 off the top of my head, so I am going to cheat here. And I'm going to use this Wikipedia article. It should let us know. This is a very common one. Um, and as you're doing anything with penetration testing, Google is going to be your friend as you're losing or losing as you're learning. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. And this should give us the command that we need. If it loads, there we go. And then you can read a little bit more about rot 13. Uh, where do we go? Scroll down here. There we go. A dash Z lowercase a dash lowercase Z. Yeah, I'm never going to remember this. I've tried. I failed. But we'll copy it. And this is this is a common thing. It's not like I'm looking up the actual solution. I know that I have to use TR plus this specific thing. So here you go. Here's gonna be the password, and this is gonna be to bandit 12. Let's copy that. SSH. And a 12 at localhost. Accept the fingerprint. 
Paste the password. Voila. We are in Bandit 12. Document, document, document. All right, how do we get to lucky number 13? All right, the password for the next level is stored in file data.txt, which is a hex dump of a file that's been repeatedly compressed. For this level, it may be useful to create a directory under temp in which you can work using mkdir make directory, okay? So it's in data.txt, which is a hex dump and which has been repeatedly compressed. So. Let's go back to our terminal. We see data.txt. Hex dump. What that's going to be is xxd. And let's look at the manual for xxd. Make a hex dump or do the reverse. So we see right here, xxd r should be what we do to revert the hex dump. So we'll Press Q to quit out of that. So xxd-r data.txt. And it's gibberish because, yep, it said that it was compressed multiple times. So obviously we cannot read that yet. So let's reset it. And we are not going to have permissions to create files here. So touch is just going to make a file. Yep, permission denied. Okay, so that's why it said make a folder in temp. We are going to mkdir uh, tmp temp, and we'll call it coal. All right, and we will navigate to that. So cd, this is not under our home folder, this is under slash tmp, so we can't just type out tmp slash coal like we did, or just type out the folder name like we did earlier. So we're gonna put the slash there first and we're gonna type out the full path, tmp slash coal. And we see our location now change. We're working in this directory. So, actually I didn't need to do that yet. Let's go to CD, go back to our home folder where data.txt is. We're gonna copy this file. So cp data.txt and we're gonna copy it into temp Coal. All right, that should copy that file. So we'll cd temp coal ls, and now we see the data.txt file there. So clear. All right, so we're going to do xxd dash r or tac r to revert data.txt, but instead of hitting enter, Man, all right, I need to give this machine more RAM next time. <laughs> TXT, I'm gonna call this file, I, what the heck, let's just call the file call. Okay, so now that reverted that hex dump, but instead of printing it, it put it in this file call. So to keep this clean, let's go to remove data.txt and it's been compressed multiple times so let's see what kind of file coal is file coal it's a gzip file okay so to decompress this first we're gonna have to rename coal to the appropriate file type so we're gonna use mv coal and we're staying in the same directory so I'll just call it coal.gz and now to decompress this, we can use gzip. And the command to decompress is going to be tacd. And we're going to use coal.gz. OK. We look in our folder. Coal's there again. Let's look at what kind of file that made it. OK, now it's bzip2. So it said this was compressed multiple times. Looks like we're going to have to decompress it 
yet again. So let's rename that file again, MV space coal. And this one's gonna be coal, C-O-L-E, spell my own name right, dot BZ2. That's gonna be the bzip file extension. And let's go and start cleaning this up. So let's clear, ls. All right, so we have coal.bz2, same exact concept, bzip2, tack d to decompress, coal.bz2. And now we have the file coal. So let's see if we can read that now. Nope, we cannot, okay. So what did that make it? All right, so it's a G's up again. So it looks like they compressed this a lot. So we'll MV coal to coal.gz and gzip tack D again, just hammering in these instructions so we really know what we're doing. That should be coal again. So let's see what that made it. Okay, so now it's a tar archive. So let's look at the manual for tar. Okay, an archiving utility. So what can we do here? Info tar, give you the manual. So R in this one, append file to the end of the archive. That's not what we're wanting to do. Well, oh, there we go. Tac X is gonna be to extract. And I'm gonna go and search this because I actually know what we wanna do, but I wanna show you how to use the manual here. So if you do man tar, you can go through this and pretty much a lot of the commands that you do within, within here, you can use man or you can use dash dash help or tac H and you can read up on this. So instead of just going through this and making commands without knowing what you're doing as you're learning, really go through and start reading this so you can start to understand the commands you're making. We're gonna look for tech V for Bose. Okay, so we wanna use that and I'll, I'll actually show you why. And tech F, we're gonna need this too. Yeah, I'll show you. We'll quit there. We're gonna use tar, and we're gonna use tac. Let's just do xf. Cool. Okay, that just goes down to the next line. If we do ls, we see, okay, we have a new file in here, data5.bin. Let's remove that. So it just dumps a new file into that directory, but if we're, Working on a machine and there's tons and tons of files in there, that's not gonna be extremely effective because then we're gonna have to go through and search for what we're looking for, which there are ways you can do that, but it's a lot easier if we get the interface just to show us what's happening. And so V verbose, you can use this in a lot of different tools that you use. So we're gonna tar XVF, cool. And that shows us what file was created or what file was dumped into the directory after we run that command. So let's see what kind of file that is. Data5.bin. Okay, that one's also a tar archive. So let's go ahead and delete that out. Data5.bin, see what this dumps and data six. So what is data six? Data six dot bin. This one is bzip two. Okay, so this is a long, long level. Let's clean up this directory. We'll remove coal. And we'll remove data five dot bin. 
probably not best practice if you're doing this on a real exercise <laughs> where you're actually uh, trying to do pen testing on a machine, but for the sake of this, just to keep it clean, we have that. Okay, so this was a bzip. So we'll mv data6.bin. And look, we don't have to keep data6. I don't like that. We'll name it col again. And we'll add the file extension bz2. And we'll use bzip2 decompress col.bz2. And what kind of file does that give us? Okay, another tar. This is getting a little annoying. Uh, let's tar xvf coal data 8 bin. What is that? Data 8.bin. This one's a gzip. Okay, so we move data8.bin. Hopefully this is going to be done soon because I know you're probably getting bored of this level. Uh, we didn't remove coal, so I'll call this one um, me. Okay, let's clear that. Okay, and me was a is a gzip. I didn't add the file extension. Yeah, gzip. Okay, so move me me dot gz me dot gz. That's a that's a good one. All right, so gz dash d me dot gz file me and it's ASCII, so we can finally read this. So let's print out me and there we go. We finally get the password to bandit 13. So for those of you that have been watching along so far and said, oh, this is boring. That one finally got a little more interesting where we had to do a little bit more than just <laughs> read out a file. So we're in SSH bandit 13 at localhost and we definitely want to document this password because I never want to do that again. Accept the fingerprint, paste it. Ooh. All right, guys, we are finally moving on to lucky number 13. That was awful. So how do we get to 14? Password for the next level is stored in EDC slash bandit pass slash bandit 14 and can only be read by user bandit 14. Okay, so now we're bandit 13, so we can't read that. For this level, you don't need to get the next password, okay? But you need to get a private SSH key. Okay. So when you do SSH, currently you've been typing in passwords, you can also use a key, which is gonna be a file that you can use to get to the next level or that you can use to connect to as a user to a machine. So we need to find where that key is. So we'll see what we have here. Oh, and it's right there. So we'll cat SSH key private. Okay. Yep. That is a key. And what we're going to do is where you know who you are. Thank you, Derek. That's a interesting comment. Uh, <laughs> what we're gonna do is SSH, and we're gonna be banned at 14 at localhost. And instead of hitting enter here, we're going to actually type that in correctly, and we're gonna do tack I, and then we're gonna find define. We're gonna define which SSH key we're gonna use. So it was in our home directory. We see here with the little squiggly that we're there. So it was SSH key.private. So that's gonna create the key that we're looking, or not, sorry, that's gonna use the key that we had in the home directory and that should connect us to bandit 14, except the fingerprint. 
um, the Wizard of Loneliness. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Look at you with your pink shirt. All right, so we're in Bandit 14, and it says, we didn't get a password for that one. Right here is the password, or the file to the password, and Bandit 14 can read it. So we're Bandit 14 now. So we're gonna cat, and we're gonna paste that file into here, and this is gonna be the password for Bandit 14. So if we get disconnected, we don't have to go back to 13 and get that SSH key again. We can just document this. And then we can just connect right back in. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Pink white shirt. Yeah, tell Derek that uh, if I threw a football at him, he couldn't catch it. <laughs> And anybody that comes across the stream is going to have no clue what I'm talking about now. All right, so <laughs> Bandit 14, how are we going to get 15? And we're about halfway there, everybody. I know it's a little slow, so feel free in the replay to kind of skip through where you want to go. Um, I'm trying to talk through this so as the people are watching, if you don't understand the commands I'm putting in there, that you actually get somewhat of an understanding. So... For those of you that know it, apologies for it going a little slower than you probably would like, but I think it's good for people to get a solid understanding when they're learning these things. Okay, so the password for the next level can be retrieved by submitting the password of the current level to port 30,000 on localhost. Okay. So. Uh, Do I have to define localhost? Let's go to map that out. Let's scan it. Let's see what's there. Okay. So we see 30,000 open via TCP. And what we're going to do, let's go and clear this out. Actually, we'll clear it, but we'll also keep in this because we need to submit this password to port 30,000. So that, that port's open, so we should be able to connect to it and we should be able to submit information to it. And it says whatever's running on that port, if it receives the password, so there's some kind of service running on it that's gonna give us the password back, the password for the next level back if we submit this password. Um, so let's show you what it looks like if we do something wrong. So what we're gonna do is NC for netcat and we're gonna do 30,000. Oh, thanks for the subscribe, man. Thank you. What's your name? Likely you just started the channel. Yeah, I've been around for a couple of months. My name's Cole. This is my first uh, live walkthrough of this. So we're gonna do cat, uh, net cat port 33,000. Actually, let's uh, make sure we have localhost 30,000 because you can do this to different machines. We're not doing it for this exercise, but you could learn that. No address associated. Uh, I think I have to do TACP. Oh, okay. I got to spell localhost correctly. As always, you have to just, you know, type the right thing or it's not going to work. There we go. So now I am connected to that port and I can submit information to it. So let's see what happens if I do one, two, three, four. Wrong, please enter the current password. So we can see that something's happening there. We can see a service that is there. And it looks like it is doing what it says it's gonna do. We have to provide the correct password for it to provide us something back. So it did provide us this back. So whatever's running there on 30,000 did send us back this when we submitted one, two, three, four. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna netcat to localhost 30,000. But this time we're gonna submit the actual password. And there we go. So that service provided us the password for the next one back. So I would encourage you, if you're watching this and you're interested, 
um, that you go ahead and you start reading up on Netcat. That's going to be an extremely important thing as you start learning penetra penetration testing. Uh, NMAP and uh, NC for Netcat. Start reading up on those and practicing what you can do. So let's go to uh, verify this SSH bandit 15 at localhost. Man, I cannot type today. And everybody that watches this, you can now realize how heavily my videos are edited. <laughs> when I'm not doing a live one, because I obviously can't type. There we go, we're in band at 15, so let's clear that out. And let's document. In our notes here, band at 15. And let's load up how we get to 16. Hey, the issues between Matt Tran and Trend Black over yet? Uh, so Trend released something saying he's not going to talk about it anymore. Matt Tran posted the apology. Tech lead's a bit of an idiot, I think. I think he's a complete moron. Um, and posted a big middle finger to everybody. Um, and admitted that he abuses the copyright system, so... I mean, it seems like it's over. It seems like Trend Black and Matt Tran aren't, aren't going to touch it anymore. And YouTube never does anything about people abusing the system. So, what are you going to do? But it seems like it's all kind of in the past at this point. All right. So, we are we are banned at 15 now. So, the password for the next level can be retrieved by submitting the password of the current level to port 30001 on localhost using SSL. Okay. So this is going to be similar, but we have to use SSL to connect. So if we netcat localhost 30,001, it just exit out. So it didn't even give us anything back on that one. And so it should say that something's wrong. So what we want to do is we can use, let's open the manual, open SSL. All right, open SSL command line tool. Open SSL is a cryptography toolkit implemented, implementing the secure socket layer and transport layer security, network protocols, and relative cryptography standards required by them. So this is a tool that we can use to establish an SSL connection to that Port. And what we're also going to use, let's just search in this manual, S client. And if you're doing this from scratch and you've never seen this before, I do encourage you to go read through the manual. I just know what we're going to use, so we'll go and search through it instead of scrolling through everything. This implements a generic SSL TSL client, which can establish a, trans a transparent connection to remote server speaking SSL. Okay. So S client is what we're gonna use because we are the ones connecting. Uh, S server is what you'd use if you were accepting the connection. So that would we'd be using if we were on the other end trying to get somebody to connect to us via SSL. We'll quit out of that. So we'll use open SSL, S client. And what we're gonna do here is tac connect. And what are we connecting to? We're connecting to localhost because we are SSH into this machine already, but now we're going to port 30,001. And again, I cannot spell localhost. I keep trying to connect to localhost. My last name's Taurus, and I suppose my... Uh, <laughs> My inner Mexican is showing. So local host, we see here, okay. So it generated a key or it generated a certificate, service certificate, here it is. Um, and we established a secure connection to port 30001. So now we're actually connected and we should be able to provide, um, provide the password and get the password for the next level back. So let's copy that.
Well. And my Cali machine's freezing. There we go. I think that copied. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right, we're back. So we're going to copy this. So we submitted that. We established an uh, SSL connection, so a secure connection to that port. We submitted the password, and the service that was running there provided us this back. So we'll go ahead and copy that. We'll go ahead and document it. And in case this machine crashes, we're going to go ahead and save this in case I have to restart this Kali machine. Okay, so using the GUI in Cherry Tree is giving me some issues. <laughs> so let's just be careful there. So we'll SSH bandit 16. At localhost. And yes, I do want to accept that fingerprint. Input the password. And here we are. So now we're getting into some more fun stuff. So this is actually stuff that you might start implementing as you're going into exercises where you are surveilling and trying to connect to remote machines for penetration testing. So 16 to 17. All right, the credentials for the next level can be retrieved by submitting the password of the current level to a port on localhost in the range of 31,000 to 32,000. So the same thing that we used, or the same thing that we did on the previous two, but they're not giving us the specific port. We got to scan between these this range. First, find out which of these ports has a server listening on them, okay? Then find out which of those speak SSL and which don't, okay? So it's listening. It speaks uh, SSL. There's only one server that will give you the next credentials. The other will simply send back to you whatever you send to it, okay? So what we're gonna do first is we are going to scan. We're gonna end map and let's do dash A, do an aggressive scan. And we are doing localhost. And we're going to do 31,000 to 32,000. And we're going to let that run. So that should scan those ports and it should give us a report back on which ones are open and some information about the ones open. So we can see which ones are open with SSL and we can see which ones. Uh, it should give us some information about which ones are going to use echo. So the ones that give us just what we submit back to it should say echo. What if I hacked into the system containing top national secret information? I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise trying to do that. Um, you'll probably get a knock on your door. Let the record show that I only advise doing this for white hat purposes. I only encourage penetration testing for above the belt purposes, for testing your own systems or testing systems for people that pay you. You can make a lot of money doing penetration testing for organizations legally. And you don't have to worry about getting that knock on your door of a bunch of guys in suits. Probably didn't need to do an aggressive scan on this one, but I'm just showing you an additional option that we have there. Uh, would encourage you to read the manual on EdMap and just do some research on it and maybe look up some tutorials specifically catered to EdMap because this is going to be a very, very valuable tool. Um, it actually has a really good scripting engine in it too for when you're assessing machines that might be vulnerable it can give you a lot of feedback on on what 
kind of exploits they could be vulnerable to. So here's our ports that are open between that range. So we see this one's TCP, it's open. You can see the one here, SSL. So this one looks like it doesn't speak SSL and it echoes. So this should just give us back what we put into it. And this one here too echoes. So echo, this one's interesting here. Okay. 31790. This one's open, speaks SSL, and we have something unknown running on it. And it looks like all the other ones do echo. So this should be the one we're looking for. So what we're gonna do, 31790. And this is SSL, so we need to... First, let's do this. We're bandit 16, and we need to submit the password. So let's cat, etc. It said it stored the passwords here. Bandit pass, bandit 16. So this is what we're gonna have to enter and what we're gonna have to submit to this port. So we're gonna use OpenSSL. Again, we use S client because we are the client in this instance. We wanna connect and we wanna connect to local host. And what was it? Uh, 31790, I think it was. All right, and here we are connected. And let's copy this password. We're gonna paste it in there. And the connection was closed, okay. We paste, okay, so we paste the password. It said it was correct. Instead of giving us a password back, it gave us a private key. So we're gonna have to use this key, uh, I would imagine, to connect to the next, to the next user, so bandit 17. And we probably, again, don't have permissions to write in this home directory. Yeah, can't. So same thing as before, we're gonna make directory, we're gonna do temp, we're gonna do coal. Actually, that already exists because that wasn't in a home directory. So temp coal, we're gonna do coal one. And we are going to, let's see. Let's go ahead and just create. And our connection died, okay. Uh, SSH bandit16 at, what was it, bandit.labs.overthewire.org port. Man, it keeps doubling up on these letters. 2220. Need to throw some extra memory in this machine. You have no clue about Linux. I used to use Linux in order to do my school projects. Now I have no clue about Linux. Linux is good and it's free. So I mean, as long as you have some kind of computer, you can fire it up in VirtualBox or any other virtualization tool you want to use and you can play around with it and learn it. Bandit 16 at, there we go. Bandit.labs it over the wire. All right, what was the password? Okay, we're back in here and what was it? We did coal one. Okay. Let's come back up here and copy this key. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put this key in a file 
to create the key that we can use because we do have to, when we're doing SSH and we use dash I to connect via key, we do have to establish what we're gonna use so we can't just reference a wall of text. So we copied that and I'm gonna use Vim and we did temp poll one and let's see, what should we call this? Um, let's call this, let's just call it key, key.private, because this is a private key. All right, so Vim is gonna be a text editor that we can use within the terminal, so here we are. I'm gonna insert, and we're just gonna paste that entire key in here. All right, so that is our key. We're gonna hit escape and we're gonna do colon WQ. So that's gonna save it and it's going to quit the application, that Vim application. So we can cat that out. Uh, temp col one, jeez. Temp call one slash key dot private. Yep, so that is using our SSH key. So we want to SSH band at 17 at local. Localhost. Oh my goodness. This encoding software is making this VM freak out. Localhost. Tack I, and we're gonna use temp, col1, and key.private. Accept the fingerprint. Asking for the password. So what's going on here? Unprotect key file permission 0644 for private key or two open. Okay. So what's happening here is it's not letting us use the file uh, because it's saying the permissions are too wide open for this key. So too many people are going to be able to use it. So we have to let's exit out of that. Um, we're going to use chmod. Um, let's do 600. Temp, so chmod is gonna change the permissions on this file. So we're gonna, 600 is just gonna be a more restrictive uh, type of permission than 644. And key.private. Okay. So that should change the permissions on that key, and then that should allow us to go ahead and connect to bandit 17. Yep, and there we go, now we're in. And let's go ahead and get the password. So if we get booted out like we saw earlier, bandit pass, not gonna learn score, bandit 17. Okay, so that covered a good bit more information a lot faster than how we started out. So, are there any questions on what we did there? Document the password. Most programmers do to low income, they use Windows correct version in Vietnam. Yeah, I mean, that's, Definitely a popular thing. Windows licenses can be can be rather expensive. Um, Windows 10 is pretty good though. You can still there's still ways to get the upgrade to happen. So if you find an older Windows 7 machine, you can probably get it for a lot cheaper. Uh, there are still ways to upgrade that for free. Um, with the Home Edition, if you're if you're a business, I'd recommend you go ahead and buy your keys. But um, with Home Edition, you can 
Am I in North America? Yeah, I'm in the United States. I am in the United States. All right, so if there's no questions about what we did there with all the uh, submitting to ports, we'll move on to getting to level 18. There are two files in the home directory, passwords old and passwords new. The program or the password for the next level is in passwords new and is the only line that has been changed between passwords old and passwords. Okay. So this should be an easy one compared to what we've been doing. Um, we're just comparing two files. I think it's in the home directory it said. Yeah. We're just comparing two files. So all we have to do is uh, diff, D-A-F-F. -F, and we're going to do passwords.old and space passwords.new. And this is going to compare the two files and show us what's different. Okay. So on the left-hand side in old, here we have this. And then see these arrows to the right side. It's going to go to passwords.new. So this should be our password for bandit. 18, we'll copy that, SSH, bandit 18 at local host. Accept the fingerprint. No, we're not, okay. Bye-bye connection, enjoy your stay, bye-bye connection to local host closed. Okay. Uh, okay. If you if you've solved this level and see bye bye when trying to log into Bandit 18, this is related to the next level. Okay. Bandit 19. Okay. So it looks like we did figure this level out. So let's go to document that. So it's related to the next level. So we'll go to the next one here. So we're in 17, but we're gonna see how we get to 19, I suppose. How many levels to walk through? There is, um, it goes up to 34, I believe. Password for the next level is stored in a file readme in the home directory, okay? Unfortunately, someone has modified the dot bash RC to log you out when you log in with SSH, okay. So the bash RC is gonna hold, basically, it's gonna define what happens when we log in uh, via SSH to a certain user. So the bash RC file for Bandit 18, it's gonna have some kind of script in it that's logging us out and uh, printing out bye-bye or echoing bye-bye. Um, so we have to find a way to get to README on Bandit 18 before Bash RC actually boots us out. So how are we gonna do that? What we can do, README, Okay, readme is in the home directory. All right, let's demonstrate this. So with SSH, there are additional commands you can do with it. So we're gonna, we're gonna SSH. Let's first make sure we have the password. Yeah. Okay. So we will SSH bandit 18 at localhost. Okay, before we hit enter, we can actually pass additional arguments to what we're connecting to on this line. So we're gonna, uh, do you have to echo it? I don't remember. Let's just say ls. Yeah, okay. So that's what that did there. So we did, we passed a ls command. 
which shows you the contents of a directory. So the home folder that it's connecting to for Bandit 18 shows that we see the readme file there. So we need to read that. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to Bandit uh, 18 at localhost, and we're going to have it cat, and this should print it out before it terminates the connection. So we'll still terminate. We'll still come back into Bandit 17, but that should give us the ability to get to Bandit 19. Enter the password. Uh, let me copy the password again here because it looks like it's not pasting properly. I need to stop doing that. It's freezing the machine up. <sighs> Sorry, guys. We'll be uh, back in one moment when Cherry Tree decides not to freeze my entire machine. Is everything better in America? I heard that of 200 people could find one. Okay. I'm not positive what the stats in America are like compared to the rest of the world. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. We're still we're still pretty hesitant to go out. Um, all right, so Bandit 18 localhost cat readme. So this should print out the password for Bandit 19 before that bash RC file terminates our connection. And there we go. So the term the connection got terminated. We're still in Bandit 17, but we printed out that file so we can see the password for bandit 19. So that should connect us, SSH bandit 19 at low. I didn't type that right. Bandit 19 at localhost. And no other arguments needed. There we go, we're in bandit 19. So let's clear that out. And as always, let's document our password. And we're in 19. How are we gonna get to 20? Okay. To gain access to the next level, you should use the set UID binary in the home directory, okay? Execute it without argument and find out how to use it. Password can be found in the usual place, uh, EDC bandit pass, okay, so bandit pass uh, slash bandit 20 should be what we're looking for. So we're gonna come here to our terminal and let's see what we have here in the directory. Bandit 20 dash, or yeah, Bandit 20 dash do. So it said this is a set UID binary, which should let us run whatever this is um, as the user that it's uh, that it's running as. So ah, that's a bad way to explain. It. Let me show you. <laughs> let me show you what it does. Bandit 20 dash do. So run it without argument. It said, okay, run a command as another user. So that's what this is doing. Um, so we can do bandit 20 do ID. So that's the example it gave us. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay. So this is showing us what we're doing here with the uh, set UID binary. Uh, so it's running the command basically as another user. So our user ID is bandit 19. That's who we're logged in as. Uh, group ID bandit 19. But here, this is the interesting part our, uh, I wanna say it's effective user ID. Uh, our effective user ID is bandit 20. So when we run this, the arguments that we add to it, it's running those commands as bandit 20. So whoever configured this, if this was a real machine, it'd be pretty foolish to have this sitting here in the home directory of another user. But let's just uh, prove that. 
Let's see. Let's do who am I? So right now I'm bandit 19. So we do bandit 20 dash do. Who am I? And there we go. So it's saying I'm bandit 20 if I'm running this command using this binary here. So that bandit 20 uh, password file is not going to be readable by bandit 19. But if we run it, if we try to cat and print that out as bandit 20, we should be able to print that out. Bandit pass, bandit 20. And there we go. So that prints out that file that we otherwise wouldn't have had access to as bandit 19. So let's confirm that SSH. Um, good lord. Bandit 20 at localhost, accept the fingerprint. All right, and there we are. We are in Bandit 20, document that one. If you have any questions about what you see going on, just let me know, um, and I'll try to explain it a little bit better for you. So now we're trying to get to Bandit 20 one. There's a set UID binary in the home directory that does the following. It makes a connection to localhost on the port you specify as a command line argument. Okay, it then reads a line of text from the connection and compares it to the password in the previous level bandit 20. Um, okay, so the password for bandit 20 is what needs to be submitted. If the password is correct, it will transmit the password to the next level bandit 21. Okay. If the connection to localhost, it makes connection to localhost. It's like UID binary. It makes connection. Okay, so we, when we run that, it'll make a connection to a, a port we specify. And then it's gonna be listening on that port and it wants to receive, it wants to receive the password from bandit 20, okay. Um, okay. Not cherry tree. Okay. Uh, let's ls. I know I said okay 20 times, but just thinking a little bit. <laughs> SE connect. Uh, let's go ahead and try to run this without an argument and see what it tells us. Usage.se connect port number. This program will connect to the given port on localhost using TCP if it receives the correct password from the other side and the password is transmitted back. Okay, so we need to have control over this. Um, we need to control both ends of this because this is going to start listening and then we need to send in we need to send in from that port uh, the password for bandit 20 so this thing will send back what we're wanting. Alright, um, first we're going to print out uh, the password, bandit pass, bandit 20. Okay, so that's our password. Uh, we need to control both sides of this, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to open another tab in our terminal. Uh, 
and we're gonna SSH also to bandit 20 at localhost. No, no. Right now I'm on my machine, so it's not localhost. We're gonna do bandit.labs.overthewire.org. We're gonna let that try to catch up. All right, uh, our port, what was it, 2220? Provide the password to that. Okay. So now we can control this from both ends. Uh, what I wanna do first is I want to open a port uh, so we're going to use net cl ugh, net cat and we're going to listen and I don't think we have to use actually let's do uh, listen we're going to do verbose so we can see what's going on and I think you have to make a separate argument for port and let's just do one two three four five Okay, so now we can see here we're listening on port one, two, three, four, five. So that port should be open. So on this tab here, we're gonna run the binary su connect on one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's that's now connected to that same port. And it said that we need to send the password and then it's gonna send us back the new password. So we're gonna send that. And we got this back. Let's see what this told us, if it told us anything. So it read what we sent it. Password matches, sending next password. So when we go here, okay. So it sent us the password and that should be the password to bandit 21. All right, we copied that. SSH bandit 21 at local host. Oh, good grief. At local host, not to local host. Permission denied. There we go. I guess I just didn't copy the whole thing. So we're in bandit 21. Clear that out. Document uh, the password. And we can go ahead and close our session over here. So in bandit 20, I'll go ahead and exit. Close that connection. Go ahead and close that tab. All right, so we're in bandit 21. How do we get to bandit 22? I know this is going kind of long, and of course I don't have a lot of followers, so anybody that's coming here in the replay, feel free to ask any questions that you have about any of this, and I'll try to get back to you in the comments. A program is running automatically on regular intervals from cron. Okay, so cron is basically your scheduled task. So this is gonna to point to some type of action that's taken on a routine basis. Uh, the time-based job schedule. Okay, so it just tells you that. So <laughs> I explained it right before they told you. Look in edc slash cron.d for the configuration and see what command is being scheduled, okay? So let's go back to our terminal. So we're going to list out 
and the list. Uh, I'm going to do dash L because it just makes it a little more neat, etc. cron.d, and it's etc. I'm gonna get more uh, higher powered machine for these streams. Cron.d. And we wanna list out what's in there. Okay, so here's our cron jobs on this machine. So it looks like there's a few, there's a few different uh, ones running. So we're trying to get to bandit 22. So it's probably gonna be cron job bandit 22 that's doing whatever the action is that we need to get the password. I didn't really tell us too much, so let's go ahead and cat that out. Um, cat, etc. etc. cron dot d cron job bandit twenty two. I apologize. I don't know why it keeps tripling up on my key entries. Okay. So on reboot and every minute, so star, 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 these stars here is how you can look at the scheduling. Um, for me to explain it well, <laughs> I, I probably won't explain it very well. I'll probably get it a little bit wrong, but uh, if you look that up, how cron scheduled, we know star, 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 uh, star star is every minute it runs as bandit 22 which is the user that we're trying to get to this script so let's go ahead and copy this and let's go ahead and cat that out and see what the script says okay so cron bin bash uh not cron bin bash uh chmod644, so it's opening the permissions of temp and this file here, okay? And it's printing, etc. bandit pass, bandit22. Okay, so that's gonna hold the password that we need, but we don't have permissions to get to it, but it's printing that to this temp file. And it's doing that every minute. It's opening the permissions up to that. So we should be able to read what's in here. So we're gonna copy that. We're gonna print that. And that should be our password for bandit22. Because this script, for whatever reason, is printing the password to this file every minute. So let's copy that. Bandit. And yeah, SSH. SSH bandit 22 at local host. All right, and that got us into bandit 22. We are going to document. Our findings. We're gonna clear this out. All right. So we got to read our first cron job. We got to uh, read our first script there. Let's go to Bandit 22 and see how we get Bandit 23. All right, a program is running automatically in cron. Okay, so the same thing. It's cron. Uh, for the configuration and see what command is being run. No, looking at shell scripts written by other people is a very useful skill. The script for this level is intentionally made easy to read. If you have any problem understanding what it does, try executing it to see the debug information in print. Okay, so same thing. We are looking for the cron job. And we saw in the last one, there was cron job 23 and 24. So I'm just gonna go and try to print it right out of the gate. All right, etc, cron D. 
um, what was it? It was cron job bandit 23. I think so. Let's see. Yep, that printed something. Okay. So on reboot in every minute, bandit 23, again, so the user bandit 23 is going to be running this script here, and that's the one we want to get into. So this is probably going to have something to do with the password that we're wanting to get to. So let's go to print out this script and see what's happening. Okay, so it's making the variable my name, which is who am I? So the command who am I? So if I run it from me, it's gonna be bandit 22, but we see here bandit 23 is actually the one running this com or running the script. So that should print out um, when this runs as them as bandit 23. My target echo, I am user, so bandit23, md5sum, okay. Uh, copying password file, bandit, my name, okay, so bandit pass, my name. So if we ran this as bandit pass 22, or bandit22, it would copy bandit pass uh, bandit22, so the password for us, and it would copy it to temp, and then my target. Okay, so my target's gonna be the name of the file um, and then we see here, okay, so it prints out the password and then um, puts that in temp my target. So again, my target's gonna be the name of the file. So we can run this, echo my name, and see where it prints out for us. Actually, we didn't define my name. Um, Okay. So we'll do my name. We'll do the same thing that they have there. Who am I? So what is my target going to be for us? Actually, we don't need the parentheses. Let's just echo it because we're not making this a variable because it won't do us much good because it's only going to give us the password we already have. Okay. So we see it's taking my name, Bandit22, and translating it into this. So for us, if we ran this, this would be the file name for my target. But we need it for bandit 23. But fortunately, I don't really know if this is the correct answer, but it seems quite simple because it's just taking the plain text of bandit 23. It's not really taking any permissions into account um, for how it's generating my target. So I should just be able to type in bandit 23, and then it's going to run this right here against. I am user bandit23 against this text here as opposed to this text here with our user 8c. Okay, so let's cat temp and let's copy this and this should be where it's writing to, I believe. Okay, that looks like a password. So let's go ahead and copy this and let's confirm it. Uh, Bandit23 at local host. And we need to SSH because we can't just type in Bandit23 at local host and expect the machine to know what we're talking about. At. And we need to delete the right thing. There we go. Bandit 23 at localhost. We're going to accept the fingerprint. And we're going to paste the password. And there we go. We're in Bandit 23, so let's document that. Okay. So we will clear this out. 
And I have no clue what we need to do next. Let's go to the website. And how do we get to 24? Don't hack dehydrated. All right, the program is running automatically. Okay, so same thing. There was a bandit 22, 23, and 24, if I think I uh, remember correctly. So it should be the same thing where we print out uh, bandit 24 and see what that's running. Note, this level requires you to create your own first shell script, okay? This is a very big step and you should be proud of yourself when you beat this level, cool. Keep in mind that your shell script is removed once executed, so you wanna keep a copy around. Okay. Let's go back to our terminal and let's cat out. Um, same thing, okay, cron job. So etc slash cron dot d slash cron job underscore, not that underscore, Bandit 24. All right, so same exact thing as before on reboot and every minute Bandit 24 is going to run this script here. So let's go ahead and copy that out and we are going to see what that script says. Oh, there we go. Enter, okay, bash, name, who am I? So that's gonna be bandit24, cd. So it's gonna navigate to var spool my name. So my name in this instant run by bandit24 is var uh, slash spool slash bandit24. Can we see what's in there? Bandit24, that'd help if I spelled var correctly. Permission denied, okay. All right, so let's look more at what's going on here. Okay, so executing and deleting all scripts in var spool bandit24 for i, so this is gonna be the variable here in uh, star and dot star, okay. Um, okay, so basically anything in there, whether it's a file or dot star, so for a hidden file, um, i is gonna be the variable that they're using here, do. Um, if i is not the, okay, so dot and, and dot dot are gonna be directories. Um, so if I, so if that variable is, as it's pulling everything, then if it's not a directory, then echo handling uh, the variable I, so that's gonna be whatever file it picks up, owner, start format, um, okay, dot slash I, so it's gonna run it. So if we put, uh, if we see a script in there, we can see dot I, um, where the script's gonna go and run it. If owner is being at 23, okay, that's us, then timeout, um, timeout. Okay, so they're setting it to where if we put something uh, <laughs> crazy in there as being at 23, that it's gonna go to timeout. Um, and then it removes the file, okay? And then it's done, okay. So what's happening uh, with this script is basically that anything that's in this directory here, which the uh, variable my name is going to be bandit24. It's going to run it and that's going to delete that script. Um, so what we can do is if we can get a file in there, um, we can't read it. Var spool All right, var spool um the folder is bandit 24 and let's just try to make a file called test Okay 
So it does not give us permissions denied to create a folder or to create something in there. Okay. Um, let's set up a workspace. So I'm imagining we still don't have permission to write in this home directory here because this is shared. Yeah, permission denied. Okay. Um, so mkdir, we're going to make a directory. Temp, and let's call this one. Good lord, stop doing that. Temp. I think we're on call two. Yep, yeah, okay. So cd. Uh, temp. Okay, so we're in here and we need to write a script um, that's gonna run as bandit 24. So currently we have bandit 23 and we have the permissions associated with bandit 23, but if we get that script to run, it's gonna run as bandit 24. So if we can get bandit 24 to do something that we're not able to do, then we can get him to somehow leak the information that we need. So we know that in etc slash bandit pass slash bandit 24, is going to be the password. So let's start with that. Um, it's Vim, and let's call this, um, I don't know, get pw.sh. Um, yeah, get pw.sh. Okay, so that created the file, and we are in our editor here. So hit I for uh, insert. We're going to do uh, hashtag exclamation slash bin slash bash holy crap this uh this machine's really getting on my nerves okay so this is gonna define our environment um So what can we do with this? Um, we'll get it to print. That seems like a good starting point. So again, this is running these commands now as bandit uh, 24. So bandit pass bandit 24, or it will be running it as bandit 24 uh, when we get bandit 24 to run the script. I didn't even hit shift, I don't know why. T underscore. All right, there we go. The joys, the absolute joys of doing this live. <laughs> um, okay, so Bandit24, so that's printing it out. How are we going to get it? Um, okay, let's just have it. We saw earlier the cron job, it was printing it out and then it was putting it into a temp file. So let's just do the same thing. Um, we're gonna have that print and then paste it into, where are we? We're in temp, call to. Um, let's just make a file called password. So it's, so this script is gonna have it um, print out what's in bandit 24, which we don't have access to, but bandit 24 will. So if we can get him to run the script, then it'll print that out and put that into temp call to uh, PW. So escape colon WQ. Okay, um, I didn't create that file, I don't think. Okay, so. touch pw so now we have a file pw so it has something to write to um also i think we have to change the permissions permission denied okay so let's uh you know i'm not even sure what our permissions need to be so let's just open it wide up because why not chmod uh 777 open this Pretty much as wide open as we're gonna get it. Uh, get dot s. 
H, but it's actually a get PW. Okay, so that opens up the permissions on that. Uh, we're also gonna open up the file. Let's make sure that Bandit24 is gonna be able to write to the password file that we want it to write to. So we're gonna change, we could probably do 644, um, but we're just, we're getting crazy with it. <laughs> we're just gonna open it wide up. Uh, and let's change chmod uh, 777. And this is the directory we created, temp call to. Let's make sure it can take whatever action it needs into here. Okay. Uh, let's clear this, clean it up a little bit. All right, so that cron job's running every minute. It was in var spool bin at 24. So we have our files here. We want to get that script into there. So we're going to use cp. That's going to copy this file, get pw.sh. And we're going to put that in var spool. Oh, geez. Spool. Spool. There we go. Bandit 24. And we did see that we were able to create files in there. So that should, when we run this, put that file into there. Okay. So ls, we'll do alps. It's going to give us more information. So we see pw. This is where we're wanting it to copy to. So we can see here that it was edited at 19. Uh, 56 So when we see that time change we can see that bandit 24 then wrote to that file and it should write the password Into there, so we'll give it a second and Go to check it 1959 okay, so it looks like somebody modified that file Let's cat pw I didn't even click A, wait. Cat PW, there we go. So this should be our password to bandit24. So SSH bandit24 at localhost. Accept the fingerprint. Paste it in there. And we're in Bandit 24. Okay, so that script worked. Let's document. Really one of the most important parts of this whole thing, if you're wanting to get into penetration testing, keep good notes so you don't have to go back and do all this stuff again and keep up with everything in the terminal. Just copy it, and paste it, it's very easy to do. So we're in 24, how do we get to 25? Let's see. A demon is listening on port 30,002 and will give you the password for bandit 25 if the password for bandit 24 and a secret four digit pin code. Um, if given the password for bandit 24 and a secret uh, numeric four digit pin code. Okay, so we have a password. We need a pin code. There's no way to retrieve the pin code except going through all of the 10,000 combinations called brute forcing. Okay. Okay, so for 10,000. Okay, so there's a four digit code. So there's 10,000 variations of what it could be is what it's saying there. Uh, so we're gonna have to brute force this. Okay. Let's go to our terminal port 30,002. Let's just see, first let's um, cat etc bandit pass uh, man bandit pass and who are we? Who are we? Bandit 24. It says it right there on the screen, Cole. Uh, Bandit24, there's our password. Okay, so we're gonna need to submit that, and we're gonna need to submit a pin code, it says. So, netcat local host 30,002. 
I am the pin code checker for user bandit25. Please enter the password for user bandit24 and the secret pin code on a single line separated by a space, okay? So let's go ahead and copy the password here. I think it's already in our clipboard, but what the heck, we'll copy it again. Uh, and it, it exited out, okay, hold up. I must have accidentally hit something, okay. Uh, we'll paste in the password and a secret pin code, so is, I guess the first option, zero, 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 zero. Wrong, please enter the correct pin code, okay. Um, what's it do if we don't provide a pin code? Fail, you did not supply enough data, try again. Okay. Um, actually, what's interesting about this one compared to the other ones that we were doing uh, earlier in this exercise is that this one's not timing out. So let's just do one, 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 one. Okay, so it's not terminating the connection. Um, and that's gonna be an important thing to note. So since it's not terminating, we will have the ability to brute force this. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. Uh, and let's clear. So what we wanna do is we wanna print out the password and every possible variation of that print code and the, or that pin code. And then we wanna basically uh, put that into that, uh, feed that into that port um time and time again after we make that connection so it runs all of them and eventually it's going to hit the right one it's four digits there's a finite number of variations it, it's eventually going to have to hit the right one so we're going to use a script to do that uh first let's make a directory it's going to be temp let's do call three i think that's the one we're on okay and let's navigate into that Okay, uh, let's use Vim and let's call this uh, BF for brute force that shell that sh uh, bin bash. All right, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? So this first uh, password is payment protection program. <laughs> password is gonna be, okay. Why is it not accepting my input? Pro tip, give your machine enough RAM to run or it is gonna freak out on you. Um, P W. <laughs> All right, there we go. P W equals big hacker guy. Thank you, thank you. P W equals this. Actually, Derek, keep watching because this is going to be the. Uh, this is actually legitimately going to be something that you could utilize for hacking. Um, this this is actually something that that is useful to learn. This concept right here of brute forcing, uh, very popular thing. So this is going to be the password. And we need to go down a line, down a line. Okay, so that established what our password is. Um, okay, and to show you what this, do, this is doing, let's just echo um, echo password. Let's save that. WQ, save and quit. And let's go to run that uh, brute force bf.sh. Okay, sage mod. Uh, let's do 644. Four. 
permission. Eh. Um, I need to get better at my permissions, <laughs> but whatever. We're live, so we're just gonna open stuff wide open. Um, ch1777, and that should do it. Okay, so that's our password. So you see that script? It's defining the variable for password, and we have it echoing password. So now we need to make it echo that and a pin number. So let's go back into that script. All right, we're back in it. Uh, let's do this. So we need to set up a loop. Um, and similar to that cron job where it had four i in this range, so in in everything. So this is what that one is establishing. So we need to set an actual limit on what our in is. So four, and let's call this variable variable pin for pin. Um, just to show you that it doesn't have to be i for pin in. And then we'll set our range for pin in. It's a four digit code, so zero, 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 zero. And then the height of that, it's gonna go um, sequentially. Jeez, man. Zero, 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 zero. Dot nine, nine, nine. Nine. Okay, so that's gonna set our range. These are that's the largest range you can possibly do with a four-digit code. We're gonna have that. I'm not even remotely. It's just picking up its own commands. Do. <laughs> We're gonna have that do. Um, four. Four pin in that range. We're gonna have it echo. So it's gonna run through all of those when we run this script. We're gonna have echo, and now we're gonna put uh, quotes here. I didn't type it three times, I pressed it one time. Um, space, because we need a space and the variable is the pin. All right, so four pin in this range, which is all the four digit possibilities, echo um, the password space, the pin, and then we're gonna say we're done. And that should print out all of the possible options for, um, for what we're doing here. So exit or um, escape colon WQ to save that. And let's just go ahead and run it. No. There we go. I am sorry, everybody. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm making a lot of mistakes here live. Um, there we go. We're gonna run the script again. Okay, so it printed out every possibility that it could print out for the password space, the pin. Now we have to find a way to get that into um, that port, pass that along, uh, basically pipe that to the port that's listening, that's gonna give us the password back if we give it one of these combinations. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it again, but we're gonna pipe it to um, Netcat. Netcat basically establishes whatever connection it can uh, for, it's a little oversimplified, but we're using Netcat local host uh, 30,002. 
and this should take all those combinations. It's going to run again. It's going to develop all these different combinations, and it should start throwing those all into port 30,002. There we go. We see it running over and over again, and finally it hit the right one. And it looks like it went ahead and exited. So the password for Bandit25 is this right here. So we made our first brute force script, which is actually going to be a pretty useful skill. Um, remember that. So let's verify that. SSH Bandit25 at localhost. Yes, we do want to continue. And there we go, we're in Bandit 25. So document, document, document. I don't know why I right click there. There we go. And clear this. And let's find out how we get to Bandit 26. Okay, sorry, my uh, headphones went out there for a second. All right, logging into Bandit 26 from Bandit 25 should be fairly easy. The shell for uh, user Bandit 26 has not been bashed, but something else. Find out what it is, how it works, and how to break out of it. Okay. Okay. So it should be easy, it says. Um, and it says that we're not going to load into bin bash. So let's see what happens. Nope, we don't want cherry tree, we want the terminal. So let's go back. Hey Maria, what's up? Have you been watching along? Let's see. Alright, so it didn't really give us any clues on how we're going to get a band of 26, so... But it says it's going to be easy, so probably just a readme file. Nope, SSH key, okay. Um, and our connection terminated, okay. SSH bandit uh, 25 at bandit.labs dot over the wire dot org. Just got in. Ah, you missed so much. You missed so much. Two 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 zero, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna keep the replay of this one up. So if you are interested in hacking, you can go back from the beginning and watch all my mistakes. I don't know if I still have the password from the clipboard. I do. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna see what this was again. The directory. I don't remember the name. And we're gonna print it out just to confirm that this is actually a key. Bandit twenty six. Dot SSH key. Yeah, and it is, okay. So we'll clear it. And we will um let's list this again. So SSH bandit 26 is what we're going to at localhost. We're using a key, so we're going to do dash i. And it's in the home directory, so we can just put in the name bandit 26, uh, not at localhost, I already typed that, dot ssh key. Uh, except the fingerprint. 
All right, enjoy your stay. Bandit 26, connection to local host closed. Okay. All right, so it said we're not, um, basically we're not loading into bin bash, so we're not loading into our shell. Um, so whatever's happening there, um, it, it, it's gonna be going into something else that's closing us out. So let's clear. Um, oh, where's the password file? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cat. Um, and let's see what it's actually doing. So, etc slash passwd should be where it stores uh, user information on the actual machine. And show you what it's talking about that it's not uh, been bash. Let's look at what we have here because it is for us. So um, bandit Bandit 25 or GREP Bandit 25, that should give us the line where we're at. There we go. So this is our user information. Um, Bandit 25, level 25, okay. So here's our home directory, home Bandit 25, bin bash. Okay, so that's what we're going to. So let's do the same thing again, but let's look for Bandit 26 in this file. And this should tell us what's going on when we make that SSH connection to Bandit 26 on this machine. All right, so user, instead of bin bash for that shell, it's user bin show text. Okay, so that's an irregular um, item. So let's let's see what, what that is. Let's cat that out. Cat, uh, let's just go ahead and copy that. Okay, bin shell export term Linux. Uh, more home directory text. Okay, so bandit home slash home slash bandit twenty six uh, slash text dot txt is it should be that ASCII art that we see for bandit uh, that spells out bandit twenty six when we log in and then exit, exit uh, exit zero so exit the shell. Um, so right when we log in, it's kicking us out basically. Um, okay, so maybe we can do what we did earlier. All right, so connect with the SSH key and can we run an LS to see what's in that? So if it's running this out of Bandit 26 home directory, LS should show us text.txt. It should show us that file when we do this. So let's try this. And it doesn't look like it's doing anything actually. Um, are we in there? No, it doesn't look like we're in there. Okay. Um, exit out of that. Let's see. We'll clear this. Because that got messy. Um, Let's see. Uh, okay, so the more command, more it's not it's not catting, it's doing more. Um, so more should let you scroll through a file. Uh, more file peruser filter for CRT viewing. Uh, kind of like this when we're on the manual page, I hit enter. Um, and it scrolls down the file. Um, so it's mooring that. Okay, so when it gets to the end of the file, it's exiting. Okay. So we should be able to... Can we run a command? In more? Interactive commands, help.
exclamation run a command in a subshell. Okay. V startup and editor at the current line. The editor is taken from the environment variable visual defined or edge. VI, okay. Okay. So we should be able to work within this. Um, okay, we should be able to work within it if we do this. So more is gonna take my actual user interface into account, which is uh, not something we normally worry about when we're working in the terminal, but for this, it looks like we will. So before I hit yes, let's go to make this really small. Okay, so that launched the art. You can see a Bandit 26 here but it hasn't exited us out yet because it's not going to do that. It doesn't trigger that part of the, uh, the command until we're done with this here. So um, I'm going to go and hit V and get an editor so then we can make this a regular size again. Okay, so now we can see uh, colon... Colon E, colon E, I think it was. Um, cat, uh, I mean, it should be Bandit 26 now. So cat etc uh, Bandit 26, oh no, sorry. Bandit pass Bandit 26. And this should print off the password. Only one file name allowed. Okay. So no. Um, can we set? set? Uh, so our, our shell isn't uh, bin bash. Let's set shell to bin bash. Okay, so let's set that. Okay, and it didn't give us an error there, so let's see if we can launch into a shell now. Uh, colon shell. There we go. Bandit 26 at bandit home directory. So let's cat. Um, cat slash etc slash bandit pass bandit 26. So there we go, we have the password now for bandit26. Copy that. All right, now what do we wanna do? We want to, um, actually we're in there, um, so we should be good. Let's go and look at the next level. How do we get to 27? Actually, while I'm there, let's go back to Mark, um, back to the terminal. While we're waiting for that to load, and let's see if clearing messes us up. No, it doesn't. Okay. And my headphones uh, are not liking the microphone. All right, let's see if that sounds, okay, that sounds a little bit better. Maybe I've turned the volume up. Okay, that sounds a little bit better on my end. Um, okay, so we're in bandit 26. How do we get to bandit 27? Uh, now, great job getting a shell. Now hurry and grab the password for bandit 27 LS. So it doesn't really tell us anything. Um, okay. Uh, bandit 27 dash do. Okay, so this is going to be the binary again. Bandit uh, 27 dash do. I mean, probably. ID. So, elevated or effective user ID is bandit 27. Okay, so we can just use this to go ahead and read 
the password file. Uh, so it gave us an easy one. So cat etc bandit pass bandit 27. And there we go. That should be our password. Copy that. And we'll SSH to bandit. Uh, 27 at localhost. Uh, no space needed, no arguments. Yes. All right, and we're in bandit 27. We'll clear that. All right, let's see. Let's document that password. And let's find out how we're going to get 28. We're getting close. We're getting close, everyone. Two and a half hours so far. So yeah, I've gone kind of slow through this. So sorry about that. But uh, hopefully this this really helps you learn something. Okay. There's a git repository at ssh bandit 27 dash git at localhost home bandit 27 git repo password for user bandit 27 git is okay so the user bandit 27 git uh, there's a repo um so it gets like a version control thing um so what we're going to do here is we're going to download what's there uh and then i guess in some way find out what the password is based off of that. So let's go back to our terminal and we're gonna have to make a place to download this to. So again, they're not gonna let us edit in this home directory more than likely. So um, mkdir is gonna make a directory and we're gonna temp and col4, I think is what we're on. All right, so we'll cd uh, temp col4 Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're in here and now we're going to get clone. So clone's gonna be the word that, or the, uh, the command that you use to pull this down. And so we're just gonna copy whatever's in here into the directory that we're working in. So we don't want that period at the end. So I'm gonna copy that. And paste it in there. And I need the password for this. So let's go back to our text editor. And this is going to be the password that we need to, oh my goodness, that we need to pull down this repo. And that permission denied. Try that again. I don't know why trying to copy from the, uh, the interface is causing Cherry Tree to have so much problem. All right, let's do this. Um, oh. Let's exit that. Um, let's cat etc. Bandit pass. And bandit, what am I? I'm 27. Bandit 27, okay. Let's copy it from here. 
All right, and we are going to just press up, go back to that command. So we're gonna pull down this repo again. Let's try this. Yes. And let's try pasting that password again. There we go. So it pulled it down, so let's clear this out. And let's look at the contents of our directory. So we see repo, so let's cd repo, go in there. And let's see what we have in here. So we have a readme, let's uh, let's cat that out. The password for the next level is this right here. So this should be the password to bandit 28. It would help if I copy the whole thing. So SSH bandit uh, 28 at localhost. Holy crap. I'm getting fed up with this computer. If only you'd run good streaming software on Linux, we wouldn't have to be running multiple operating systems <laughs> making this thing poop its pants. All right, we're gonna accept the fingerprint. Paste the password. All right, we're in bandit 28. Uh, not even close to where I clicked. There we go, bandit 28, paste that. And paste it twice, whatever. Bandit 29. We'll clean it up while we're waiting for that page to load. If you can switch applications still, geez. This is uh, kind of insane. Here we go. Uh, I pasted it three times. See, it's tripling up my, uh, my input for some reason. I hope that's the password. Um, that should be. All right, so we're in 28. How do we get 29? Okay. We have yet another repo. So let's go back to our terminal. Make directory temp cult five. And let's CD. Cool five. All right, let's uh, let's print out the password for the current level because we're going to need that to pull down this repo, and let's go ahead and copy this right here. So same thing, get clone, let it catch up, paste in the link, say yes, and then we need to paste the password here. All right, let's clear it out. And when we run ls, we should see the repo, cd repo. All right, let's see what we have in this one. So we have a readme. Readme. Dot md. Bandit notes, some notes for level 29 of bandit credentials. X, 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 okay. Um, all 
Okay, so that doesn't tell us much. Is they they removed the password? Um, let's see if get show tells us anything extra. Okay, so okay, so this is the ID. I think it's the ID of the commit into git so git does like version control so any of the former commits they did we should be able to see and we see the notes on this one is fix info leak okay there we go and they removed here we here we see the change so they removed um the password so this was the info leak they were talking about so when we did git show we can see what was modified on it so this should be the password to um, who are we? It's right above there. Call Bandit Twenty Nine. This should this should be the uh, Bandit Twenty Nine password. So we'll go to copy that, and let's see if that works. So SSH Bandit Twenty Nine at localhost. So if you're using Git, it is important that uh, you know it's not just on IT for the data security if you're using git and your developers are putting data leaks into um their commits then there's an additional um attack vector so it is on everybody to practice good security uh, habits so bandit 29 at localhost i'm just gonna get really close there we go it seems like over here okay I don't know. It seems like my microphone kind of went out a little bit, which sucks because these things aren't cheap. Yes. Yep, and that was the password. So it looks like their devs uh, messed up. So we're going to clear. That's bandit 29. Let's document. Document that. And let's see how we get to 30. We are almost there, people. We are almost there. All right, another get one. So we're gonna do the same thing. I think the last one was coal five. So I think we're gonna be at coal six this time. So make directory temp equal six. And we will see the temp equal six. And we're not gonna see DD, we're just gonna see D. And we are going to print out the password. Who are we? We're bandit 29. All right, there's our password. And we are going to git clone into this directory. This guy right here. Yes. All right, and let's see, this is gonna be the password here. All right, and that should have cloned that into our directory. Let's see what we have. Oh my gosh, ls. We have the repo, cd repo, and clear to clean this up. All right, what do we have in the repo? Another readme, so cd, or not, not cd, uh, we're gonna print it, cat. And 
just gonna copy that because my typing just isn't working today. All right, Bandit notes, some notes for Bandit 30 of Bandit. Credentials, username, Bandit 30, password, no passwords in production, okay? Um, okay, so let's do the same thing. Um, let's do get that, sh or get space show. This is the commit author, <laughs> author bend over. Nice. Um, fix the username. So username was banned at 29. They changed it to 30. So nothing there. No passwords in production. They didn't change that. Okay. Um, anything in the logs? No. The other, the other ID was just the initial commit. Okay. Mm. See if they put any tags on it. No tags, okay. Um, let's look into Let's look into the branches. Um, so get, uh, I think it's just branch. Get branch. Um, so branches basically with get, there can be different, uh, you have version control of, of what you have, but then you can also have different basically paths um, of the product. Um, that's, <laughs> that's a poor way to explain it. Um, I'm not super good with git. Um, So I don't know how to explain it much better than that, but uh, looking to get branches, uh, but it looks like we just have master. Um, are there any hidden branches? Get branch dash A. There we go, okay. Um, so here are some other branches that we didn't see. Head is origin master, dev, so no, all right, the note said no passwords in production. Do they put passwords in dev? So we're gonna do git checkout. Um, remotes slash origin slash dev. And let's see if they messed up in here. They shouldn't have given us the development one, but let's see if they did. Um, all right, now that we have the dev one checked out, let's see what's in the repo. There's a readme, so where was the cat readme? And there we go. So they did put the password in this branch. So we're gonna take this password, this should be Bandit 30. Let's copy it. And let's um, let's SSH to Bandit 30. Bandit 30 at localhost. I really apologize for how slow this VM's running. <laughs> it's uh, it's been pretty painful. It's probably part of the reason it's been going for two hours and forty-five minutes now. Uh, we're gonna paste that into bandit 30. All right, here we are. Clear that. Document. And let's find out how we get to bandit 31. We are so close. We are so close. Oh geez, another get one. Um, they better be careful or I'm gonna get stumped very soon because I am not good with get. Uh, so same thing, we're up to what, Cole 7 now? So MKDIR, temp, 
Coal 7. And it's not T E M P dummy, it's T M P. So, uh, another rule of thumb don't be a dummy like me. <laughs> uh, there we go. So, let's CD uh, T M P Coal 7. All right, and clear this. Let's cat etc bandit pass. Of course, when I'm trying to scroll, it doesn't triple up my entries when I want it to. Um, etc bandit pass. And what are we? Bandit thirty. All right, there's our password. We're gonna get clone um, real quick. Let's see if it gave us any more information to pass clone the repository. Yeah, it doesn't give us any information. So just go dig through this repo. Copy that. And paste it in there. Yes. the password with my cursor go there we go all right clear this and are you serious it's doubling up the R every time now there we go all right CD repo. Oh my gosh. We're so close and this machine's on its last leg. Uh, there we go. We're in the repo. Let's clear that. Let's try to power through this before this VM dies on me. What's in here? We got the readme again. So cat readme.md. It's going to do EM. It does it every time. I'm like consciously doing M-E, M-E, there we go. All right, just an empty file, just an ept me, <laughs> uh, just an ept me file. So those the guys that made this can't type either, so I don't feel as bad. Um, okay, so let's go through the same process. Get show, is it empty, but did they change a bunch? Uh, no, and this is the initial commit. So if we go to the git log, uh, there's probably just this one commit. Yeah. Um, so that didn't help us. Um, git tag. Secret. Okay, so they did tag this entry. Um, so we're, we can go git secret. Um, no, get show secret. I think show. If this is wrong, somebody that's better at Git than me. Let me know. There we go. That looks like a password. Let's try it. SSH bandit 31 at local host. And let's go ahead and copy that. And we're going to say yes to the fingerprint. Paste it in there. Okay, here we are. Clear that out. Bandit 31 at bandit. And document. Because we are so close to be ashamed to lose now and lose our progress. Especially with this machine. It feels like it should have crashed a while ago, but it has not. So how do we get to Bandit 32? So close, guys. We are so, so close. Oh, another get one. Another get one. I hate get. 
Hey, same thing. Uh, what are we on now? Coal seven. No, we're on coal eight, and we made a lot of directories. I pressed backspace once, but it thinks I pressed it twice. All right, CD. Temp. Print out the password for bandit31. Oh my goodness. There we go. <laughs> bandit pass. And what are we with bandit31? Get clone uh, this repo here. All right, it's not registering the control key. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Didn't register it, and then I registered it 400 times. There we go. Get clone this key here. Yes. And then our password is right here. Come on. We're so close, guys. Come on. All right. That copied that in there. Let's CD to the repo. And then let's go ahead and clear this and clean it up. Oh my gosh. There we go. Cleaned it up. Uh, let's ls and see what we have in here. We have a readme. Let's go ahead and copy that because this machine just isn't recognizing my input hardly at all now. Uh, cat paste. Okay. This time your task is to push a file to the remote repository. File name key.txt, may I come in? Branch master, okay. So it wants us to make a file called key.txt. And wants the content of the file to be may I come in. And it looks like when we push that, um, it looks like when we push that, it should return the password to the next level. Okay, um, let's let's see what are we gonna do here. Okay, so vim, and we're gonna go and create the file key.txt. Before we do that, let's just go ahead and copy this content so we don't have to type it in. Uh, vim key.txt. Paste that in there. Okay. Um, may I come in? I don't know if it needs the quotes or not. Uh, we'll try it without it. If we wreck it, we'll just make another directory. Uh, so let's go to clicker. Oh my gosh. All right, and that file should be here. Okay, so what we're gonna do, oh, I haven't used git in a while. Um, git add, key.txt. The following paths are ignored by one of your git ignore files, key.txt, use dash f if you really want to add, add them. Okay, so a git ignore file, so, okay, ls dash um, la. Los Angeles, uh, dot git ignore. Uh, 
Okay, so any txt files, star, of course, is wildcard.txt, er, txt. it's making it ignore it because of this file. Um, we can remove it, maybe. Can we? Or we can just use the flag dash f. Um, I mean, let's just do that. Let's just do dash f. Okay, so it didn't trigger um, the ignore file this time. So it looks like we're good to go there. Um, so let's go ahead and clear this, clean it up, get back to the top. Um, okay, now we need to add it to master. So let's get um, commit. And we didn't change anything. So I think we have to do a message dash M. Um, Hole is a good hacker man. All right, so we're going to commit it with that message. And one file change, one insertion. So git push. this doesn't work I'm gonna be so lost <laughs> um, git push um, what was the path what was the path hold up origin origin master okay git um, get push, I think is what we're doing, right? Yeah. Add commit push. Origin master. And it, it really thinks that I'm hitting the space bar 500 times. I promise I'm not. I really promise I'm not. What? Okay. Um, so it just did like five inputs there. Uh, git push origin master. Let's see if that works. Uh, the authenticity of uh, get 31's password. Okay. Um, so if I put in my password, I think that should do it. Um, cause the get the, uh, the bandit 31 get is supposed to be the same password. What the freak, man. Now I'm starting to get upset. There we go. Attempting to validate files. Okay, so it validated that file and it gave us a message back. Well done. Here's the password for the next level. And here's the password. So let's go ahead and copy this because I never want to look at that one again. Because um, I was 90% sure I was going to fail and we were going to be stuck on this live stream for a long time. <laughs> uh, that's 32. Paste that in there. SSH bandit 32 at local host. Am I sure? Yes. Password. There's the password. Welcome to uppercase shell. What? Um. Let's go and clear this. Okay, so it's it's uh, making it capital. What if we? Is it just the inverse? Okay, so it forces everything to be capital here. Um, 
Can I exit out of it? Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh man, we have so many sessions <laughs> open. Um, I'm gonna open a new tab here. Um, just so it's neater. We're gonna open a new tab because it doesn't look like it's gonna let me clear. Oh my gosh, I did not press it that many times. Um, it's not going to let us clear it, so let's just do it here so it's neater for you as the viewer. And sorry, i got to do it slowly because, again, this machine is absolutely on its last leg. Um, one more time. Yeah, there we go. Um, SSH, Bandit32 at Bandit dot labs dot over the wire dot org there might have been a way to clear it I don't know if it's um, all going to uppercase two 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 oh um can we pass an argument ls and see what happens let's see if it capitalizes that uh, let's go to our notes for the password all right we're gonna copy this we're going to come back into bandit 32 password field welcome to upper shell okay so we're in it's converting everything to capital and it doesn't look like the LS did anything. I have one more idea. Um, exit out of that. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, but we're going to dash capital T um, to see if we can disable the pseudo terminal and see if that does anything for us. Uh, no, it still puts us in upper shell. Okay. Um, and it looks like since we can't clear it, I'm actually going to stick with passing along LS. Just so it doesn't give us all that stuff at the beginning. Um, let me exit out of that. Just because I want to keep this neat for you, the viewer. So we're going to do LS. It's not going to do anything for us, but it should cut back on some of the cruft that it gives us when we log in because I'm not going to be able to clear it. Um, okay, so maybe I can force this to go into a shell from whatever's causing this to, to capitalize. Um, so we saw earlier on, was it Bandit 26, where we were being forced out and it said exit zero, so you can evoke a shell zero. Um, so let's try that. Dollar sign zero. And it's not saying anything, so let's see what's going on. Who am I? Bandit 33. What? Okay. Um, so it looks like whatever it's loading up is running as Bandit 23, whatever this is causing to capitalize. Um, probably not explain that very well. Um, but it looks like right now I'm in a shell as Bandit 33. Um, let's do the ID. Yeah, my UID is Bandit 33, so the password for 33 should be... Should be in the same place. This is a weird one. Um, I'm, I'm not positive right now why I'm banned at 33. I'm guessing whatever, whatever it's booting into that's upper shell. Oh my gosh, okay. So I can't go left. 
Um, so I have to type this correctly. Or I have to backspace, okay. Um, cat. Oh my gosh. This, this is the worst one for my keyboard to be freaking out on of all time. Um, etc. I'm just gonna go slow. Oh, look. Okay. I'm gonna go slow because it's like tripling up on everything I typed. So this is <laughs> gonna take a second. I apologize. Uh, bandit. I'm just gonna type the whole word. Bandit. Come on. There we go. Underscore. Come on. Give me an underscore. There we go. Pass. Come on. We're, we're so close. Come on. Uh, who are we? Bandit 33. Okay. Uh, well, we are Bandit 32, but we're acting as Bandit 33 for whatever reason. Um, come on. That looks right. Please don't be a typo. All right. There we go. All right. So this should be the password for Bandit 33. I'm going to go and copy that one. And we are going to go into our documentation. We are going to paste 33 right here. Oh my goodness. And um, I don't think there's a 34 actually. So let's go ahead and SSH while we're here to bandit. Uh, where are we getting to? Bandit 33 at localhost. <laughs> Dude, I'm going insane um, with, with what's going on with it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know you couldn't. <laughs> SSH. We are so close, guys. Bandit. 33. At local host will it do it host key verification fail uh no um let's exit out of that area we're back we're back on our machine uh my computer suck dudes uh because when they see my cali machine on the network I want to know, let them know that I'm cool. What level am I on? I'm on the last level. You actually just missed me solve, I think solve, the last level. SSH, bandit, 33, at localhost. No, it's not localhost. Guys, I'm losing it. I'm losing it right at the end. Um, <laughs> I swear this machine is making me go crazy. It's bandit.labs. Dot over the wire dot org and it's port 22 <laughs> I swear 2220 okay look I just got to delete two O's I got to paste a password oh well I missed your comment sorry Maria um <laughs> okay we we're there guys we got to delete two o's we got to paste a password and then we should be we should be in the clear there we go bandit 33 finally so we're gonna go and clear that i think that's the end of the game unless uh they recently released more levels because the one at the end should just be a congratulations I didn't even read 32 to 33. They just launched into it. Okay. Um, load. At this moment, 34 does not exist. Okay, so that should be it. Is there anything in here? Is it a trick? There is a readme. All right, so cat, and paste the readme in there. 
Congratulations on solving the last level of the game. At this moment, there are no more levels to play in this game. However, we are continually, continuously working on new levels and we'll most likely expand this game with more levels soon. Keep an eye out for an announcement on our usual communication channels. In the meantime, you could play some of our other war games. If you have an idea for an awesome new level, please let us know. So that's it. That is the end of Bandit. So we went through the entire thing. Uh, that was the entire war game. That's kind of like the entry level war game for Bandit. They have a lot more on there. So if this was interesting to you, if you learned anything from it, I'd encourage you to keep going. Um, yeah, keep going. That teaches you a lot of basic skills. Um, I'm planning on doing some more stuff with like try hack me and hack the box. And a lot of the skills that are on there, you start building on them. So it's really good to learn some of those basic skills that we went over, like how to navigate directories and knowing where you're working from, and then port scanning, uh, netcat, you know, very important one. So look up if you're interested in learning more and getting better at this. Research the different things you can do with nmap uh, and netcat, nmap especially when you're looking for vulnerabilities to certain machines. Uh, it can be very, very useful um, when we're getting into other stuff, things like Metasploit uh, as a word that you might be interested in. Um, but that should do it for this one. Again, this replay is going to stay up. I usually take the lives down, but this one's going to stay up, so feel free to go through it. Uh, I know it's really, really long. Um, and that was because I'm trying to talk through the whole thing. For those of you that are brand new at all this, I'm trying to just explain every single instance of what's going on in here to you. So you're not just going through commands because that doesn't help anybody really grow. Um, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't really help much. Um, you'll know how to paste commands to get through this exercise, but when you start doing penetration testing, you're not gonna know what you're doing. So I do try to explain, it takes a little bit longer. So if you don't like that, let me know, and maybe I can go through some things quicker uh, next time I do this. But if you do, uh, let me know too. Let me know different things that you'd wanna learn. Again, try hack me. I'll probably go through a couple of the rooms there, hack the box, I'll probably go through a couple of the uh, scenarios with them. But anyways, that's it, that's Bandit. Uh, or that's over the wire bandit war games we did it live you saw a lot of mistakes you saw my computer freak out a lot <laughs> and you saw me lose my mind a little bit there at the end uh but at the end of the day we got through it and for you that followed along congratulations you completed your first war game probably your first war game if you're doing bandit uh and you know here's to more uh exercises solved so again let me know what you want to see next hit the like button Subscribe to the channel for more. Hit the notification bell. There's new videos every single week. Next one's going to come out this Monday uh, where we talk about Slack CEO uh, not really having a firm grip on reality. Uh, I, as always, uh, share it with a friend if you think anybody would benefit from this. Uh, and, you know, use this as a tool as you go through it. Skip through. Uh, I'll see if I can put timestamps to the different levels. Uh, but let me know what you want to le learn about next. Uh, as always, I'm Cole, and I'll see you in the next one.